Ladies and gentlemen, the show is about to start in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hello, good evening and welcome to another edition of That Millwall Podcast and Easter Monday edition of That Millwall Podcast where we are going to be analysing and going over the abysmal, pathetic and damn right unacceptable result today at Rotherham where Millwall fell on the sword in a 2-1 defeat, bringing us back down into trouble, looking even further over our shoulder than we have in previous weeks. Um, a few matters of business before we get started. You realise that I'm on my own. Poor Stephen's not very well today, so we wish him very well. Um, and we'll be bringing on a guest today, Nick, who was at the game today, who will share his thoughts. And uh, and we'll get your questions in as well. So bear with me, ladies and gents. I will try and get to as many of your comments as possible, because I understand that this is a very, very angry chat from what I've been seen so far. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Nick on and we'll get the conversation started. Nick, good evening, mate. How are you? All right, mate. You're right. Not too bad. Could be better. How was your Easter? It was going all right, to be honest with you, Jay. Um, yeah. Just disappointing, mate, to be honest with you. Um it is. It, it is very disappointing, and and this is the this is the thing that when we come off of, you know, some pleasing results, you know, a, a draw at West at home to West Brom, most of us, if not all of us, would have took that at the start of the weekend, looking at Rotherham as a win. But in typical Millwall fashion, we we go to Rotherham and and we lose, you know, and that's been the case for a Millwall team a number of times in in the past. A few of us old school fans like yourself, we expected that kind of result although we didn't expect it, if that makes sense. I just want to touch on, obviously, you was at the game today. Um, Millwall, look, the stats speak quite a lot of volumes. We had more possession. We had 14 shots to Rotherham, six. Both teams had five shots on on goal. We had um, 11 corners, you know. we But we didn't make the, the keeper done, made some good saves, but... We had a couple of big chances, one on ones that that we've got to be burying. And obviously, you were behind the goal. What would you reckon? I just think we're not clinical enough, and we haven't been for a, a number of years. Personally, um, it was an underwhelming performance. It lacked the passion that we needed. Um, it reminded me of Wigan away last year. The team yep. is already down. Yeah. But we, we can't be losing games like this. You got, no. you got to look at the teams below us. QPR, they've had three points out of us. Sheffield Wednesday have had three points out of us. Rotherham have now had three points out of us. Yeah, it's, it's a bad situation. And considering oh. the results that today, I mean, you look at Blackburn, you know, with their tough running, they went and stuck five past Sunderland in a res resounding win. Birmingham go get a win against Preston. QPR beat Swansea. You know, Stoke and Huddersfield battle out a draw. The only result that really went for us was that draw and Sheffield Wednesday losing to Middlesbrough. But we're brought right back down into it now. Now, Harris made a number of changes today. Well, I say a number, he made two. He brought Casper Denore back in, which a lot of people were calling for. Um, was it the right decision? How did you think that Casper played today in, that, in what he was asked to do in this sort of Harris type football? I think Cass is a great player, mate. Um, obviously, you know that. But do you do you change a side that's been getting results? We we don't know what goes goes on day to day in that building. Um, Mitchell may need a rest. Um, I was surprised to see Sav still start. Bring in, bring in Wallace in. I thought Danny Mack might get the nod there. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting you say that about yeah, it's interesting you say about Wallace because I fully expected Danny Mac to play. Wallace hasn't played football for a while, you know, and he took a massive, massive hit and and ultimately Danny Mac come on. I thought Danny Mac did okay. Um, but I want to talk about the goals, um, the goals we conceded. They're 
they're shocking goals. There's, there's no other way to to, to describe it. The, the goals are absolutely appalling. You know, Tanganga, was he being held for the second? What was Sarkic doing with the first? You know, it, and we're just when we seem to find the self getting back into the game, we're putting balls into the box, we're trying to create, Rotherham go straight up the other end and they score. And, and you know, we, are we committing too many forward? Is it Harris getting... Maybe a bit jittery, you know. He made a whole sale changes, you know. Some did better than others. I thought Longman did okay when he come on. But what do you make of the, the the way the game was managed and and how we ended up seeing that game out with the players that were on the pitch and and do some of these retain their place going into what's now a, a nine pointer, if you can call it, against Huddersfield on Saturday? I mean, I, I wanted to see Longman shortly after the half because there, there was. They were open at the back. They were a poor, poor side. Um, so Longman, yeah, I wanted him on. See, see, Mayo. He made a couple of runs, got some good balls in, but they're late changes again. And I mean, I don't want to keep going on about last year. Obviously, I mentioned Wigan, but I think we all all remember the last seven games how they went. Yeah, I've, uh, and I think this yeah, is given field as well. Um, yeah, I, I think it's given Millwall fans a, a bit of PTSD in terms of what happened at the back end of last season, where we was fighting for the playoffs, to what's happening now, where we're fighting to to stay in the division. You know, the, the fixtures they don't get any easier by all accounts. You know, Huddersfield next week. You got Stoke at home to West Brom. Um, QPR got a massive game against Sheffield Wednesday. Leicester are at home to Birmingham. So these there is games there where if we can get a result against Huddersfield, we can pull ourselves, you know, back into the position we started before the Easter weekend. But the fact that we've gone to Rotherham and the performance has been so bad, it it doesn't fill us with confidence. You know, the fact that Harry's come out and said we're, you know, we're not going to underestimate Rotherham. We're not going to we, we know what we have to go there and do. And, and I thought he set up like that, bringing Casper in. But ultimately, you know, some people were saying they wanted it more than us. I don't believe that. I just thought it was two very, very poor sides yeah. who, who can't create and who were just overall very poor footballing teams. You know, we're just, we just haven't got good players. Um, they're good in what Harris has tried to do so far. But overall, we're trying to attack. It, the game didn't suit us. You know, should you change a winning side or a side that's been playing very well? Would we have got a better result if he stuck with Billy, if he um, didn't make the, them changes? Um, again, I was surprised to see Savile come, uh, play both games after allegedly being, um, you know, not very not very fit with his hamstring. But um, this, I want to get to some of these comments before we... Um, lose some of them. So Harris brings Danny on. He runs down the left. Sky's foot over the crossbar, and we have naturally left footed wing and Adam. See, I, I, I agree with this. He did bring Mayer on. So, what was your thoughts on Mayer when he come on? How did he look? Yeah, he he looks a handful. Um, it's always tough at, at two one down. You want to see the kid come on and make a name for himself, but you're asking a lot, especially with the amount of minutes that he has had. Yeah, that's that's the thing. He's he's been thrown in the firing line in a desperate situation where we've got to try and nick it, and that's not really. Either way, Jay, you, you can bring anyone on down the wing. And yeah, ex the ball, exactly. The balls are coming in the box, but without we we lack quality up top. We have done for a long, long time. We lack goal scorers. I mean, they're number nine, the one with a ponytail. Yeah, Maybe absolutely. look at someone like him next year. Big bodied, bit of an handful. Yeah, we've mentioned that type of striker before. We haven't really replaced a Morrison or a Matt Smith or that type of striker because it did give us, you know, in them final um, moments of the game where we are sticking the ball in the box, we was using Cooper as that centre forward and then it left us wide open. And and if we had a Matt Smith up there, we would have been able to have better shape. And, and you know, that striker's instinct, you, you may nick one. I thought Cooper did really well. To, um, to knock it on to, to, for Longman to knock it in and get the goal. But there was countless opportunities. I mean, the, the, the Rotherham goalkeeper, for me, is one of the best goalkeepers in the division. He's well, a he top three. He's got a man of the match today, and that, that shows up a lot with the stats, the, the way we played. He, he was better than our number one that we've just paid over a million pounds for. 
I mean, so, so, play his position in. Yeah, was he positioned the best he could be? Maybe not. Both goals were in the bottom corner. Uh, but then I feel tanganga has got to get closer to his man as well. I mean, yeah, I, it kind of looked like he was really failed. Good. I don't know from your view, but it looked like he was slightly fouled. Again, he's got to do better. You know, it's 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 a tough one because you're committing so many men forward, but you do have to be disciplined. And we've been used to being the very disciplined in, in how we're playing. And we haven't really gone after teams. I mean, we went after Rotherham late in the second half, but this is typical Mirror. We wait till we go behind or when the going gets tough before we start throwing the ball forward and start trying to commit. I thought the first half, we was very, very slow. We was laboured. We weren't getting the ball into forward positions or down the wings and we weren't committing. Um, we wanted the ball at feet all the time, turning and little back passes and so on. And and we, we I think you said it to me earlier off, off air that we, we went down to Rotherham's level. Now Rotherham's level is our level because we're down there. We're, we're no better than Rotherham. You know, we've just managed to get ourselves in a bit of a better situation, but we haven't got a target man like Rotherham. We have, you know, they've got some good players. They're poorly managed and it's and, and ultimately we've fallen on the sword to them yet again, as we have done with these bad sides. Mir will beat the top teams or perform well against the top teams, and we we play poorly against against the bottom teams. But the running in next week, we've got Huddersfield away from home, which is now a massive six point. Now, what you, what you hoping to see there? I ain't got a good feeling about going Huddersfield. Um, I can see us getting beat and then going to beat Leicester at home. To be honest with you, that is Millwall. We do seem to play at the opponent's game to their level. We will beat a side above us because they're more up for it. But then today, today happens, doesn't it? That's the thing. And like this, like what Paul's saying here is that we, we did see it coming. You know, set plays were our only real avenue of attack today. We didn't really see any clear cut through balls, any. Um, grit in midfield to drive forward. I thought Casper, after he shook the rust off, I thought Casper started to get on the ball and started to try and dictate play. I felt we was looking for Casper a little bit too much, um, to be honest with you, um, at the start. Um, but that's, again, shaking the rust off and he started to look a bit better. But at the end of the day, you can't go to Rotherham, batter him like we did with 14 shots on, on, on goal, you know, have 11 corner kicks and and come away with with what we come away with. You know, the performance was poor. Overall, the players knew they had to get something out of this game. And at one point, a draw wouldn't have even been the worst result. Looking at it, at one point I was saying, do you know what, if we can, when we scored, if we can hang on to this with the other results, we haven't really lost that much ground. And that's really poor that you have to sit there and say that when you're playing bottom of the league, who've won, who'd won three games all season before playing us. And their last win was on Boxing Day. Yeah, that That's, one that, games is, it's not acceptable. I don't care what way you want to dress it up. Today was not acceptable. The, the, the team's down. Whether it, whether it's today, whether it's midweek, their next game that they lose, they're down. We can't be giving up points against sides yeah. like that, especially well, when we're for our lives. Well, this is it. You know, every game is a six point now. Connor says here that feels a must win game. I don't think Harry should be here next season. We've been found out and there's no plan B. So the plan B that Harris allegedly may or may not have, we saw today. And that was lump it, lump it, lump it, lump it. Harris ball, hoof ball, if you like. And it didn't work because, as we said, we did not have the target man. And it was all up to Cooper. And we was getting it out wide. And there were some crosses coming in. Brooke put some crosses in. Mayer tried to put some crosses in. It was going out for corners. But we got no real sniper up front with the headers. We got no one sitting on the edge waiting for it to come out. It was just, it was all just hit and hope. And, and it looked really out of place, really reckless, really unorganized. And then Harris threw the kitchen sink. And and again. You know, we, we just come unstuck. Rotherham go straight up the other end and, and stick it in the back of the net. Um, David, as you say, you can't play Casper and Savile, both flat pace. Casper should, couldn't keep the ball and gave it away quite a few times in the first half. A donkey's got more pace. I agree with what you're saying there. I, I think in the first half, he was very... I think the term one is he was shaking the rust off. He hasn't played for a while. You know, he, was, he got a minute against West Brom. 
And he's probably being asked to do something a bit different. I do think that Harris tried to get him to dictate the play today. I felt Harris wanted to go after Rotherham a little bit. I just don't think the players were good enough to do it and, and couldn't execute it. Um, it would have probably been better to just stick to what we know, maybe with the game plan we had against Leeds, because we are a better team without possession. Whenever we've been a team that has possession of the ball, we do not win many games. I'd love to see the stat on that, because obviously I'll go every week at home. I'll go, you know, a good 40, 50 percent of away games every season. And whenever we don't have possession, we more likely grind out a result, whether that's a draw, whether that's a win. But today we had more of the ball. Rotherham sat off us a little bit. They done what Mill will do to other teams at home, and they try and hit us on the break when we lose the ball. They got that big lump up front, that Eves, and they get it down to him. And they just but and in in their sort of downfall, they're just not they just weren't good enough to be able to be clinical with it, like a team that we we had been when we had Matt Smith and Morrison playing that sort of style under Harris. So in terms of playing with Casper and Savile with not having the pace, I don't think it's about having the pace from them driving forward. I think it's their, their creativity is there. It's uh, the other players around them. They're just like, they're just not good enough to get into the positions to to be able to capitalise off it. And they don't give him any options. I thought Savile was, you know, his usual -ish self. He was okay. He wasn't great. I thought Fleming did okay. I thought Fleming was pretty good, had a few good chances. But other than that, there wasn't anything to rave about from any of them. And this is Rotherham away, bottom of the league. What do you think, Nick, on the player performances? Who who stood out and, and who, who shat an egg, shall we say? Before we go on that, Jay, I just feel... With we lack confidence going forward, and when we knock a ball about midfield, you dress up the stats that they weren't. Yeah, right. We had seventy percent completed passes, but we allow teams to get positioned. We we make it hard for ourselves through a lack of confidence for me. Yeah, the, co the confidence is, has been a big thing because I don't think this is a confident football team. I just think it's a team that gets told what to do and 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 they do try and do it at, at the best of their ability. And the, like what Harris does is basic football under Harris. There isn't too much thinking involved in a Harris formation. You know, it's very disciplined. It's off the ball positional awareness. It's keep it tight and then try and hit them. It's all about mentality, all about energy and keeping your focus. So when asked to do something different and be technical and get after teams, we look like a deer in the headlights. We we can't put the ball in the back of the net, as Bobby's saying here. We just can't find the net. Obafemi, I thought today, didn't really get himself into any good positions. Um, I thought we did well trying to get up and hold the ball up. It didn't pay off, but he didn't really get himself through on goal or, or, or we didn't even find him to get through on goal. You know, we drifted wide and then we put the odd cross in and Cooper does what he normally does and gives away a foul when he's looking for a penalty, when he should just try and stay on his feet and see if the, see if someone commits to him. But going into next week, what do you think Harris will do? Is, is he going to change anything? Because it looks like Wallace, you know, that was a bit of a nasty uh, whack he took there when he went up for that 50-50 that and looks like he's hurt his back. Um so I don't think, Chris, that Wallace will fit in. I think Wallace, more physical and bigger, suited playing Rotherham today. He'll probably suit playing Huddersfield, to be honest with you. Um, but Danny Matt, come on, wasn't the worst player today, I didn't think. I thought there was others that were worse than Danny when he come on. He tries to stretch. He's a bit more direct and he's got, he's got a bit of pace about him. So in terms of formation going into the Huddersfield game, what do you think? Do you think we'll see any changes? Do you think the panic button's been hit and Harris will uh, stick with Casper, for instance, or does Duncan Watmore lose his place? Where do we go from here? I think Harris being Harris will go back to what he knows, same what he did when he came in. He'll go back to what's ultimately grinded out results. Um, you, you mentioned standout players today. No one, not one of them. They're, yeah. they're not justifying the wages at the moment. But, I mean, we, we've spoken on a Saturday sitting there and 
you go around that team, what is a championship player? Take, take Zian and Lenny. We've got League One players. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with most of them. Obviously, we can't, we're not going to include the lone players in that because they're not our players. No. And go down or stay up, these are the these players ain't going to be here. You know, Tanganga's not going to come to Millwall. I think if people think we're going to go and get Tanganga, I think you're going to be greatly disappointed. Um, but I agree. I think other than Lenny, who's been outstanding, who's player of the season, you know, in, in everybody's everybody's eyes. Um, there is a list as well. That, that but, says a lot about the others. Well, yeah, exactly that. Exactly that. And, and that's going to be a problem with a lot of these players hitting 30 or the wrong side of 30. Um your Savills, your Bradshaw. Bradshaw's going to be here next year because allegedly he's uh, had his 12-year, 12-year, uh, 12-month um, extension activated. So, Bradders is going to be here. Now, Bradders in League One, maybe, but I wouldn't have Bradders back in the Championship. You know, Savills out of contract. Murray Wallace, I believe. You've got all these loan players. So, in total, we've got 11 players that are going to be out of contract. So, this team's going to be entering a massive rebuild whether we're in League One or we're in the Championship. The only thing saving grace is that if we stay in the Championship, that we might have some more um, finances to, to be able to do that. Um, but at the moment, there isn't anybody you'd stick your hat on saying what they need to be in next season. Honeyman, I agree with Paul's comment here. Honeyman, you know, um, right men in use SA, long when more attacking will be the same defensive lineup. I do agree with that because that's what we know under Eris. I just want to come to this comment because... You know that's something that's that's been put out, um, and just want to touch on on uh, Gary's comment here. Sad news of ex Mill captain Dave Mimmit, who died from a massive stroke at 63 years old. R.I.P. Dave, my friend. Yeah, R.I.P. Dave, and um, you know uh, respect to your family and and sorry about this sad time. Uh, thank you for your comment there, Gary. Um, so in terms of what we need to see from now until the end of the season. We're now in a situation where if we lose to Huddersfield, the goal difference ain't really going to matter anymore um, because that's starting to come down and the point differential, that's going to disappear. And then we are in a massive dogfight with the fixtures we've got coming up where we've got some home games. You know, we've got Cardiff coming up at home. We've got um, Plymouth coming up at home. Um, these are winnable games, very winnable games. Leicester have not been themselves so we can go and get something from these games, but we are making it extremely difficult for ourselves. How do you see the rest of the season going? And do you think Harris is going to stick to his guns? I know you said he's going to stick to his guns, but does that mean Billy Mitchell comes back in? Yeah, I think he has to. I think, I think Billy gets a lot of stick and sometimes I, I don't see how. He, he is a Millwall player. He works his socks off and... We've grinded results out. So why would you look to do something different now? I think I, I agree. I mean, I'm a massive, I'm a Billy Mitchell fan. You know, the, the pod knows that, the, the viewers know that. I, I love Billy Mitchell. I think he can do a job that other people can't do. I think he's in. He's very much like a, what Jimmy Abdu was for me all. You know, not as loved and, and you know, not as good as Billy, as, as Jimmy. But... Jimmy wasn't the greatest player, but Jimmy would sit on someone for 90 minutes. You know, he'd pop up and, and nick a goal at, at once in a blue moon, but he would work tirelessly and give 110% every single week. And I think Billy does that. Um, does Savile come out? I don't think he does because I think Savile is Harris's go-to guy. You can see the relationship they have. They're always, you know, hugging at the end of games. They're always talking. Harris is... A, a big uh, George Savile fan and George Savile loves Harris and he plays very well in this formation. But is it going to be Casper that gets sacrificed? I, I do think it will. I do think it will because Huddersfield are going to try and stretch us. They're at home and we're going to have to try and shut them up a little bit. We ain't going to go toe to toe. So I think that, yeah, Billy will come back in. I think Danny Mack will start a left back. And I think Norton Cuffey gets a start as well. Someone that can, he's better on the ball than, Duncan Watmore, because let's face it, Duncan Watmore, he gets his head down, he runs, you know, and he, he's quite quick, but he's he's not a good football player. You know, he nicked a goal last week and he actually played very well, sorry, on Friday against West Brom. I thought he probably deserved his place in the squad today, Duncan Watmore, and his performance. Should have scored two against West Brom, but ultimately he had a good game. 
But well, I think we we'll still missed the target from 10 yards today. Well, well this is the thing. This is another thing. He, he never covered himself in sugar today. So I think he'll drop out. That experiment's got to end now. He needs to get Norton Cuffey in there, who's been a good player this season when he's played out wide on that position. He's been a very good player. So I think he will revert back and we will see a more defensive thing and we'll set up not to lose and try and hit us, uh, try and hit them on the break without giving up too much um, going forward in, in our own box because ultimately we've shown today that when we go after teams, we're not disciplined enough to stop teams going up the other end and scoring because from a quality standpoint, we ain't got it. And that's and, and that's the fact. And we can't stay up top because he sticks Cooper up there and expects Cooper to win everything or be that second striker. And then we have nothing at the back. So it's it's going to be hard for some players. I think what more Casper, because I don't think Casper's going to be dropped from anything he's done particularly wrong. It's just what works for Harris. We've said that we're in a dogfight and it doesn't matter how we stay up. This isn't about formations and playing style. This is about staying up. And Billy's going to come in and do that. Will we stay up now? That's the that's the big question because before Friday, things look rosy. And me and Omar and Dan, we come on the podcast and Omar, you know, fought six points and I was right behind him. I fought four. And, you know, Millwall fans were fairly confident, but a lot of us knew, myself included, that Rotherham is a banana skin game. And ultimately, it's that's how it's turned out. And we've got another banana skin game coming up at Huddersfield. So, on the spot, I'm going to put you on the spot before I let you, um, before we carry on. Do you think we're going to stay up or not? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Whether that's wishful we... thinking, I, th I think we will. I think we've, if we look at our run of games that are coming, they are winnable. Plymouth have been brought right down into it now. We've got them at home. I think Plymouth are going to sack their manager or have sat their manager. Maybe someone in the comments can let us know. So that, that's going to be a different Plymouth we team. That we're some, good, some good shifts lately. West Brom, I'm slightly disappointed that we didn't see that one out. I thought, I thought we played really well. I can see us playing well against Leicester because we will play well against the bigger sides. I think we will have enough. But, I mean, we sat there in September, Jay, and said, right, what are the three worst sides than us? We we knew we'd be in this position. It was evident. Well, well, this this is the thing, isn't it? Is that who are the three worst teams, three teams that are worse than us? And I can't really see three teams worse than us at the moment. Now, we've done really well under Harris to start his tenure back at the club with getting some major results. You know, the Watford game, the Southampton game, the Birmingham game, they're big results under Harris. But then we lose to Leeds, albeit a good performance. We then draw at West Brom, a game we should have won. We just couldn't put them away. And then again, we lose again today to Rotherham. And I think the biggest problem is that while, sometime, while some of the performances are there, we still cannot put the ball in the back of the net. Mm -hmm. Now, are there three teams below us that have worse strikers than us? I don't think there is. I'd love that Adogi, whatever his name is, Ugby, that Sheffield Wednesday striker. I'd love him up top. Uddersfield have got some good players. Even Rotherham, that Eves, you know, there's there's some players down below us that can score goals. Blackburn, Schmodix, top goal scorer in the championship. You know, uh, Plymouth have got that Whitaker. They've got goal scorers that can help get them out of this situation that we're in. We're based, we're pretty much relying on not getting beat because we don't score enough goals. Now we're just lucky that our goal difference has, has been the way it has been because we don't really take a hammering. You know, we took the eye in to Ipswich and then Leeds and, and Coventry throughout the season, but we haven't took a massive eye in on a regular basis. And that's because we have kept teams out. We have been good at that, especially under Harris, but we cannot stick the ball in the back of the net. And ultimately, if we go down, that, that's going to that's gonna be our downfall. That's going to be our downfall. I just want to come to Andrew's comment here. If we draw or lose to Huddersfield, we'd have to rely on QPR, who a month ago were in the bottom three, to beat Wednesday on Saturday, Leicester to beat Brown and Rotherham to beat Plymouth. And, and this is the situation we're in, Andrew, is that 
we, even though we slightly have been, we've been relying on other teams' results. Now, we was able to get away with it a week or so ago where we were saying, you know, the goal difference and we're five points key with goal difference, it's six points, etc. You know, it's all about the teams not better in our result. But that's out the window now because we have to start winning some games. We've got six games left. We need points. And Huddersfield is the biggest game that we're going to have since Blackburn. Every game now is the biggest game we've had since Blackburn. And this comment says everything from Dan. Dan, hope you well. Last time we came from behind to win a game was v West Brom in October 2022. Clear mentality issue under multiple managers needed to score an overhaul in the summer. I'll come on with, I believe, with Dan and with Mickey and Stephen. And, and we spoke about the issues that we have with mentality, with the overhaul. Now, we've had a bad time off the pitch. You know, God rest him, John Berylson passing. You know, we've had three managers this season. But hindsight's a wonderful thing. And after that Blackburn game, how that season ended with the performances at Wigan, Hull, you know, even to the wire at Blackpool, who were down, you know, who were well, down that evening, and then the Blackburn game, it should have been blown up then because this team does not deal with pressure situations like other teams do or like other teams have. We are very, very poor when the pressure gets put on. And that shouldn't be a Millwall side. We shouldn't give a fuck about pressure. We shouldn't care nothing about other than going out there and putting 110% in, into that shirt. But something in the background is holding these players back. What do you think it is? Do you think it's a mentality issue? Do you think it's a, a, a squad issue? You know, the players good enough, recruitment. You know, Aldo's got a lot to answer for. I totally agree with you. Um, you know, do you think it's recruitment? What, what do you think the issues that we have? Because let's face it, we've got, if we stay up, great. But these issues are still going to be there. So what do you think, that the, what direction do you think the club need to go in, even if Harris is here or Harris isn't here? I, th I think they're, they're setting their ways. We, we mentioned how many starters we've got that Harris brought in, but they played a, lo a lot of games under Gary Rout. Yeah, they are set in their ways. And Joe came in, and whether he goes on to be a good coach or not, we'll we'll find out. But can you teach an old dog new tricks? This, I think, that's half the battle. Is a lot of these players, although, like, as Andrew's saying here, is that the finances, if regardless if we stay up, we we're not going to have the finances to replace the ten players that we're going to lose in. That that's that's that's. A given, you know. Um, so we've got to look to the youth, in my opinion. We've got to look at some of these youth players that are playing well. Alex Mitchell, you know, he comes back. That's for me is a Sean Hutchinson replacement. Should be starting next year. Maybe the jump might be a bit too big for him, but we need need to start thinking ahead, or the board need to start thinking ahead because this isn't a situation where we've got a squad for next season. We're losing most of the starting 11. Now, mentality aside or issues aside or issues with the board or with the management, you know, whether Harris is here or not, this needs a massive overhaul because this is a team for the losers. The mentality is shot. None of them are good enough in the head. We might have some good individual players like Zian Fleming, like Casper Denore, like Ryan Leonard, but the overall team does not have the mentality needed to compete at the top end of this division. We've shown that. Last season was an anomaly. Yeah, or before that, you know, we was creeping, 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 pushing on the edge of the top 10, then pushing on the edge of the top eight, then the top six. Gary Rowell got as much as he could out of this squad. Harris is going to get everything out of this squad before the end of the season. After this season, it's a free-for-all because Harris isn't guaranteed to stay here, even though he's got 12 months left at the end of the season. So, do you think Harris is the right man to take us forward? What do you think the squad's going to look like? And where do we go in replacing these players? Harris will never get sacked by this club. He, he will walk, in my opinion. I've heard a lot of ramblings that he goes upstairs, which I've, I've got a lot of time for. 
I think it does start at the top. That's where the change needs to come. But we've got to get younger and faster. Yeah, I, I think that's been a massive talking point is that this squad is ageing. You know, um, some of the players who were the best players at the club are starting to show flaws majorly, you know, with their age and, and with the amount of games they're playing. Cooper's not been the same player. Uh, Murray Wallace has looked shot to bits. You know, Savile's getting on a bit. Still a great player, Savile. I love Savile, but, you know, he's getting on a bit. We haven't got any ready-made replacements for these players, especially in central midfield. You know, we've got Kaspar and Billy, but who's behind them? If Savile decides to move on or we don't renew or whatever, who's behind these players? What strike have we got behind Kevin Nisbet and Bradshaw, who both spend more time on the injury table than they do on the field? And goals are not something that we're missing with these players because they don't score goals. Bradshaw had one good year out of six years. He's done nothing other than that. He runs well and he means well and he gives everything, but we need strikers to score goals. What have we got out wide? Duncan Watmore, Ryan Longman, like these are not good, these are not good football players, not at this level. Remain Essay, what happens with Essay? Uh, Mayer needs to start having a big bit of a bigger role because he's going to be needed next season because we're not going to be able to go out and replace these players, like the comment before alluded to. This hits the nail on the head. Well, up, Dan, it's true. This squad is old. This squad can't do it anymore in the pinnacle of the championship where it's Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, most weeks, Friday, Monday. It's difficult. It's difficult now. You need a big squad. And for a club like Mill who doesn't have a big squad or the finances to have a big squad, we need to start looking at the youth. But what do we do when we have good youth players? They go. Isaac Alafi, we spoke about him on the previous pod of that there's a buyback clause to bring him back. He's currently like one of the top scorers in, in, in Stockport side in the division for Stockport who were fighting for promotion. Do you bring someone like that back? Where do you look in our youth system? Um, we've said it for years now. I mean, the 21s seem to be always doing well, but do we get the benefits? We don't, do we? That, that's that's the problem, and it they, they you know when when some of them look really good, Man City come in and they give us a little million pound and pat on the back, and then they take him off and then they sell him for a fairly hefty profit. Um, in terms of what we're going to be doing in the off season with the board, the situation with Harris, the links to other managers, if Harris is here, and we're in the championship. Where do we need to look? Where do we need to strengthen? What's uh, what's priority one, priority two, priority three in that side? I think we need a centre half with pace straight off the bat. We we probably need two strikers and and, and finishers as well. But I mean, you could look at every position, Jay. I think mm. they're all up for up for grabs. Zian in the 10 is our star already. Um, I mean, we've paid a lot of money for our goalkeeper, but I think every position is up for grabs. To be honest so you that. say that about Zian Fleming is, you know, he's the, the stud and probably the prized asset when it comes to recouping money because Mill don't recruit money for players. We just don't. We haven't made any money from player sales this season. So would you sell Zian Fleming, say you... For instance, I'm just going to throw a number up there. Say you get offered five, six million if we're still in the championship for Zian Fleming. Do you take it? If you could get if you could get a Charlie Creswell and Obafemi back, for instance, or go and get a target man and you can spend three million on each or four million on Creswell and you go and get a play, another striker for two million, do you do it? It's a tough one, Matt. I stick my neck out. Yeah, I, I would. I would have dealt with him in the summer, to be honest with you, when the, the numbers were a bit higher. I think yeah. we've got so many holes in that squad that we have to be realistic. Well, and, and that's the thing. I mean, hindsight, again, is a wonderful thing. 10 million, 10 million for Zian Fleming or whatever it was, in Euros, 8 million or whatever. You would have gone and got Charlie Creswell. You would have gone and got a 
probably a better striker. You could have probably gone and got the um, Blackburn captain that we was rumoured to be heavily after. Um, and we would have probably been in a better situation because we'd have had a bit more depth. We'd have had a bit more flair, but we would have got younger and we would have got better quality players. Now, Zian's a good player. He's a very good player and he has played very well in in stints this year. He hasn't reached the heights of ne of last year, obviously, but he's asked to do a different job and we're asked to play a different role. Um, but ultimately, this is about the squad. This ain't about one player. And if you can go and get two, two good players, real good players in this division for the price of one, I think you have to bite their hand off. Bailey makes a good point here. You know, wages is a big issue. Creswell's probably on a decent wage now, Leeds, after his deal up at the start of the season. Probably is. Probably is. And Obafemi as well. Obafemi's probably on, you know, a fair, a fair chunk. I wouldn't be surprised if we're paying probably 30% of their wages, uh, how it normally works with with um, loans. Unless we're paying the full whack, I don't think we are, because we definitely ain't with Tanganga. So with Tanganga going back, Obafemi's going back, and with your Longman going back, Norton we Coffee. are going to... Sorry, mate. Norton Coffee's going, isn't he? Norton Coffee yeah. going back as well. We need to replace these players because all these players are young as well. So that, again, ups the, the age of the squad, the depth of the squad, and the quality of the squad. Now, I think we'd have more chance of getting Criswell in the summer because I don't think he's got a future at Leeds, especially if they go up. And I'll, and I'll be fair me if, if when Burnley come down, will we... Will we try and make a snip at him? I'd like to go after Obafemi. I think he's a good player. I think he can be a good player for us. But then you've got Nisbet, you've got Bradshaw, and then you'll have Obafemi. Someone's going to miss out, and that's another wage. And I think you're going to have three of the same type of striker, whereas we need a big target man. You know, if we would have signed um, Kiefer Moore when, you know, the deal was done, um, and he ultimately turned it down because they couldn't get their replacement in or whatever the reason was. We we wouldn't be in this situation, I don't think, because we would have had a plan B and we would have had different options. That's what it's about, having different options. We saw today the problem that without having that target, man, it was on full display today because we may get something out of that game with a target, man. And and that that was clear today. Harry should look at that if he's the manager next season. He should look at that game today, or that back end of that second half, and and say to himself, "I need a target man." And if he doesn't, then he shouldn't be here. I'm a massive Harris fan. Everybody, he's Harris is a legend. He keeps us up. He's got God status. But if he can't see what we're seeing and it doesn't change, we're going to find ourselves banging trouble next season which I think we will be. If we stay up, I think we're going to be in this situation again next season because we can't replace these players. We haven't got the finances and we haven't got the squad depth. And like I said, we've got 11 players that won't be here if we don't renew some of them. So even if you was to renew these players, that does take away from the finances you're able to spend because that goes on wages. And then we've still got a similar squad of a similar age, of a similar quality, that couldn't get it done last year when the chips were, you know, when it was crunch time and are not getting it done this year for vast amounts of this year. We had a good December and then we had a good month when Harris comes in and now it's only one point from three and the holes, the leaks, the issues and the flaws are all starting to come out now because the honeymoon period for Harris is over and he's got to change it. So, do we beat Huddersfield? I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. And if we don't beat Huddersfield, or at least, the very least, don't get a draw from the Huddersfield game and they beat us, I can see the mentality of last year, the mentality under Edwards, creeping back in. And I don't think even Harris would be able to save us. What do you think on that? Would you think we stay up? Right, let's start with Huddersfield. Prediction, I think we'll get a draw. Would you be happy with a draw, Jay, at this point? Well, it, it depends on the other results, because you look at the other teams that, that are around us who've, who've got to play. You know, you've got... 
the likes of Stoke going to we at home to West Brom, Middlesbrough home to Swansea, QBR, Sheffield Wednesday, Leicester at home to Birmingham, Cardiff at Hull. You know, you've, you've, you've got... <coughs> these are all games that can go in our favour. You know, so if we do beat Huddersfield, we're back, we could probably breathe a little bit easier again because then that's one less game done. That's five games left where they need to make up seven points. You know, do I think they can do that? No, I don't. But do I think that we will fuck it up? Yeah, I think we will because that's the type, that's the club that we are at the moment. That's the mentality that we've got about us because then straight after the Huddersfield game, we got to come back home to the den on Tuesday night and play Leicester. You know, it's a quick turnaround. And then you've got Sheffield Wednesday at home to Norwich. You've got Preston at home to Huddersfield. Plymouth have got to play QPR. So as big as this Easter weekend was for our season, next weekend is now even bigger. Because again, it's two matches in a very short period, space of time where teams have got to play each other around us and they've got harder fixtures. And we have got an opportunity to pull ourselves away. Will we do that? We might nick a result at home to Leicester if we lose to Huddersfield, but then we're just playing the yo-yo situation with our emotions and with our mentality that we have done all season. Now, the comments are going mad. You guys are just as angry as we are, and, and rightly so, because these players need to show more. Was it a mentality issue today? Do you think it was a mentality issue today? where we just wasn't up for it or we just couldn't couldn't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rotherham? Or was it just a quality issue and a lack of having that target man and a lack of a plan B? I think they underestimated Rotherham, first and foremost. I think they're tired. I, th I think we're, we're seeing the same as last year. They are a tired football team. And for, for how well we played against West Brom, when... You're having to defend in them long stints. It is tiring mentally and physically. And that was on show. They just didn't get going. Did not get going. And I wish I knew the answer. Because I think there's a lot of issues with that team. I really do. So what do you think the main issues that going into the Huddersfield game? Um, outside of what's going on off the pitch with people, you know, in the boardroom and whatever, you know, issues that may lie there with certain individuals. What, what do you think the issues that Harris needs to address? Continuity. I, th I think let's just get a starting eleven and stick with it for now until we need to make changes because the changes that he made today, they, they obviously weren't the answer, were they? Yeah, and it's interesting because Casper has fallen on the sword, not from a quality standpoint, but just from a fit standpoint, that he doesn't fit what Harris is trying to do. And I actually thought he wasn't a bad player today. I thought that we tried to force him on the ball and we tried to make everything go through Casper at times in that game. Um, and it just didn't work. And it just didn't work. I think, yeah, Billy's got to come back in for me. That would upset people. But Billy Mitchell has to come back into that team because he does the job that Harris wants him to do. And he does it better than, excuse me, he does it better than everyone. And Harris has got more confidence, clearly, in Billy Mitchell because we've lost our second game under Harris. All right, Leeds, I'm not going to paint that down because no one really expects us to beat Leeds. But losing to Rotherham, you, you have to start looking at within. You've got to start looking at the changes that need to be made. You know, Mayer. Mayer got himself down that left-hand side comfortably against Rotherham. I think he would cause Huddersfield a lot of problems. And I think he should start. He should get a start. What have we got to lose? Because you're just going to stick Watmore up there again. But what does Watmore offer us? He doesn't offer nothing to this football club. He's a headless chicken. He runs and runs and runs and runs and runs. And all right, he nicked his goal, but he also missed his absolute sitter that could have won us the game. What more needs to not see the field again this season? Longman needs to not see the field again this season. All right, he got his goal, but yeah, he's yeah. not going to be here. He's not going to be here. It goes back to what we said weeks ago about players that are not going to be here. Do they care enough to play for the shirt in a situation that we're in? 
And I don't think they might look like they do sometimes, but I don't think overall they do. So get Mayer in the team, get Billy Mitchell back in the team. Brooke Norton Coffey's probably only one because he's had a, he's had overall a good season, Norton Coffey. So he's the only one that I would say out of the players that ain't going to be in next season that should probably come in. But then Honeyman has played very good. So if it's for me, if I'm, I'll come to you after, but my formation for, for next week, I'd, it, I'd, obviously I'd go with Sarkic. You know, I know a few people ain't going to like that, but I thought Sarkic has been pretty decent lately. You know, he's made some good saves and, you know, he's been a part of what has been a good defence under Harris. So I'll go with Sarkic, Lenny, Cooper, Tanganga, Danny McNamara, Mitchell, Savile, Mayer, Honeyman out wide. Fleming behind Obafemi. I don't think there is any any other lineup because there isn't any other players fit fit enough to wear that shirt or good enough in the situation that we're in to to warrant getting a start. So who do you, who are you going with? Before I let you leave, I'm going to get your team um, selection and your prediction for next week. I I I'd stick by that, Jay. I would have Billy back in, and I, I would like to see that Mayor on the wing. Just to just to give a few problems, but if you don't see him, if he's still still a bit green, um, like I say, we don't see what goes in day in day out. Then I'd probably see Longman on instead of instead of Watmore. Okay, and your prediction? Do we beat Huddersfield? I think one all. One all, and then obviously won't see you for the Tuesday game. I'll probably see you in person though at the Den. So what you're going with on Tuesday, the following Tuesday against Leicester? I think we draw that as well. You think we draw that? So two points, and if results go out, eh? And if results go our way, they could be two valuable points. But look, Nick, I want to thank you very much for your time for coming on. Appreciate that. It's been a, you know, it's not a very good conversation to have, um, but I appreciate your time, and uh, I'll catch you down the den, mate. Thank you very much for joining us. Hello, mate. All right, thanks to Nick for coming on. Look, it is a bit short notice for guests, but Nick was there today and it was good to get his opinion. And he shares some of the exact same opinions that we all have, guys. Like, look, you know, this is a mentality problem that's rotten through the club and Harris is doing his best to, to do that. And uh, we're going to spend the next sort of half hour or so going through your comments now while I'm running solo. So why did Harris play Honeyman on the wing today? when he's fit so well for the gaffer in the middle of his past few games. I think he's put... See, the thing is, Honeyman has played out wide under Harris most of the, the games that he's that he's been in charge of, you know, and Honeyman does a really good job there. I wanted to see Honeyman move into the middle with uh, what we thought Savile was going to be injured. Um, so I would like to see that try and manoeuvre him in there in the middle. That could be a good thing because he's got the legs... He cares, he's a cruncher, and um, he, he, he can stretch the field, Honeyman. You know, he's a real good player for us, but I think Honeyman will probably stay out on, on the wing because it's a settled position. The only position that really hasn't been settled under Harris has been that left-hand side. You know, he's chopped and changed with Longman, uh, Brooke Norton Cuffey, Duncan Watmore, and, and Mayer today. Um, but we're, we're running out of options now, you know. It's going to have to be the same back four. We, we are strapped at the back. We cannot afford another injury at the back for God rest us if we get another injury at the back. We're, we're banging trouble because we're playing a right back at left back with the injuries that we've got now to our two left backs. Cooper's had a poor season. Thought he would give us more after he got his new contract. That's a really good point. Um, that's a really good point because I, for one, was quite pleased that he signed his new contract. Um, he has been a good servant for the club, a real good servant for the club. Um, but he hasn't played very good this season. He hasn't got on the score sheet, which is unusual for Cooper. He normally, he's normally good for half a dozen each season. Um, so, yeah, Cooper is, is one who needs to stare at himself in the mirror because he hasn't played very well. He's a different player without Sean Hutchinson. When Sean Hutchinson's in that side and he's the captain, 
Cooper feels a sense of relief, and Cooper is a much better defender. I think the captaincy really holds him back. I don't think he should be captain. I think it's too much for him. I think you need to give it to George Savile, who, who's a bit more feisty, who likes to get in the refs here, and just let Cooper concentrate on being a defender because he isn't a very he isn't playing very good football at the moment, and he does need to hold his hands up for it because he's been very poor. Get Bobby in the box, Jay. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, yeah, Danny Mac should have started today. I totally agree with you. Um, this is a, this is an interesting point because I think he is as well, Alex. I think Longman is a Harris type player. Um, the thing with Longman and the thing with the club situation with the finances is that versatility is going to be ever more so important when it comes to recruitment because we haven't got millions to spend on players. Someone like Longman, who has played forward, maybe not very well, but has played out on the left, played, can play wing back, can play wide right, can play in the cam. I think you get some versatility from Longman that covers a few positions, and you'd probably get him at a snippet the way Hull would go in. You know, they've spent a lot of money, Hull, and they if they don't go up, then I think Rossini's job could be in danger because their expectations are so high. Um, I think he would be a Harris type signing. I hope he isn't. Because you only hinder Adam Meyer because I think they're predominantly he's predominantly a left-sided player. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't like him to to come back to be honest. But you know, don't wish him don't wish him any harm or, or any bad bad juju. John probably think you are Harris might bring Hutch in for Tango as Cooper plays much better of a skip. He does, as we just said. I don't think Tango gets dropped because I think Tango is has been he's he's a brilliant defender. Didn't have his best game today, but who did? You know, but he can also play right back. So the option is there, you know. Um, we're lucky that Lenny has been able to stay fit. That's been a mantra of his downfall over the last recent years and even up this season. Um, I think that one more injury to the back line, hopefully Hutchinson can come back soon enough to give us that option. But we are getting very, very thin. Um, but yeah, I agree. I think Hutchinson at some point, you need leadership. You need leadership. In, in this team, especially at the back. Now, for Tanganga's quality, I don't think he's a leader, and Cooper certainly isn't. So maybe that is that is a that is a call that gets made. Or maybe Cooper gets dropped and Hutchison comes in alongside Tanganga. Why not? Because it can't do any harm at this point. I just feel the big physical side, we've got to match that and beat them at football. And this is why I was quite a little bit down on the whole Murray Wallace getting injured because Murray Wallace has been a good show. Murray Wallace has been a good player. You know, his legs have gone, that's for nothing, but he's physical. And he, he would add to that game plan against Huddersfield, he would. I think Danny Mac might struggle a little bit, but then Danny Mac's pace does help make up for it because they do like to stretch it, Huddersfield. They do like to burst down the wing and, and whip it in. So, you know, it, it's, it's Danny Mac whether we like it or not because there is no one else. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do agree with you. And and that's it, Chris, isn't it? But the, the problem is, mate, is that the evidence, the evidence is supporting that that theory at the moment, you know. Um Denora and Mitchell behind them in the middle would be better. I think need to drop Fleming. That's an interesting take. I want to know what your thoughts are in the chat about um Fleming, because he he's the only one who can really play or has really played the cam for us for a long time. You know, Savile, when he first started out, he played more advanced and he was very good there. Um, but that midfield free, that's an interesting take because we don't really get forward enough. The only problem I see with that, Connor, is that if we do sit them free behind, what one of them sits further ahead and how do we link the play with the forward men? Because, they're all naturally deeper line midfield players. We'd need one of them to to move up because if you drop Fleming out for three central midfielders or true central midfielders and a defensive midfielder like Billy is, where where does the attacking threat come from? Where does the link between the midfield and the attack come from? If you're going to drop Fleming, you probably need to sit someone like an SA in there. Will he play under Harris? Or probably not as much. But SA is probably the only one. Um, and Marku, if fit, you could see sitting there who's got the pace. But then I'd like to, I want to see a Marku as a striker. 
So I think we're sacrificing Fleming to just create another problem if we do that, to be honest with you. Yeah, Tank, yeah, I agree with you. Look, I think Danny was dropped because the options were there. Andy, Andrew, sorry. The options were there for Danny to be dropped. I think if you drop that Tango, there isn't really another option there unless Hutch. I don't think Hutchison is, is fit enough to start games at the moment. Um, so that's that's the only call there. The problem is, is that we all you do want to see these players dropping out because they're not performing, or you know, you want to see others get a chance, but there isn't any ready-made players that can come in and, and take that role. This is a good option. Honeyman in the 10. Yeah, I agree with you, Peter. That's a name that hasn't been touted in the 10. Why not? You know, and then you could see Brook Norton, Cuffey and Meyer go out wide. That's, that's a good option. You know, we could see that. What about using Fleming as a striker? Any thoughts on that, using Fleming as the centre-forward? Because he's clearly the only one in this team that's got goals in him. So what about that, dropping him in, into the centre-forward position where he can drop back and link play and it can be spread wide as a, as a false nine, for instance? What's Pete, I want to know people's thoughts on that. Yeah, agree with you, Chris. Agree with you. You know, the, that, that is an option. An option that hasn't been discussed much. So... Um, it could be an option. Will Harris do it? I don't think he will. I don't think he will do that. I, I think he's going to be true to what he's he's done. You know, Fleming's played every game under Harris. Um, and I think he's going to go back to what what set us on the road to safety in, in, the, in the first place. But Fleming up top, Honeyman in the tent, that could work. I, I think play him up top. Um, that is a monster. Similar. Yeah, I agree with you. Your my who who are you interview, Bobby? Drop um the pod a DM on Twitter, um or in the community chats that we've got, mate. If you're part of the community chats, and I'm sure that Mickey or Stephen or Omar will set that up. Um, the who are yous are becoming more frequent. Um, Omar's went out last week, so check Omar's out. Mine's coming out at some point this week. So, yeah, definitely, it's there, mate. If, if you want to do it, like I say, drop a message in or DM myself after the pod and, and we can we can get that arranged if you want to do that, mate. Not a problem. Yeah, I don't think he's better than him as a striker, but I think one of the comments saying, look, yeah, like you just said there, John, look, he's, he's our best finisher. Clearly, he's clearly got the instinct. He's got the, he's got the mind for it. Um, and he's a bit more clinical and technical. He isn't just a run straight, you know, rush into the box and try to... He can score goals from outside the box. He can score goals that others can't, you know, left foot, right foot, you know, curlers. He's got some... He's got that technical ability about him where, you know, if it does drop onto the edge of the box, him being that further forward player, that false nine, for instance, it may work. I would definitely be open to trying that because something's, something's got to work because we're not scoring goals Ladies and gents, we ain't scoring goals. We need to score goals. That's the only way that we're going to stay up is goals. You get points from scoring goals. And while we keep teams out, mostly, you know, we only get beat by the odd one or two, you know, especially under Aris, we don't concede many, but we're not scoring. We had to rely on a 90-odd minute or 89th minute, 90-minute winner, Birmingham. You know, we had to backs against the wall, for Watford, for much of that second half, you know, that we're winning 1-0, one 1-0, nil, one nil, and it's a 2-1. Great result at Southampton, but, you know, it's a 2-1 with Southampton. And it's a, we squandered a lead at Blackburn through a defensive error. We haven't got any room to make any defensive errors in this side because we don't score the goals that allow you to get away with the odd mistake. You know, we don't go and pump teams 3-0. Because if you do, and Danny Mac makes that, if we scored the chances that we had against Blackburn and Danny Mac makes that mistake and lets Blackburn back in and they get that goal, that killed us because that was the one mistake that we could make at the back and it was punished and we couldn't recoup from that. And it's the same today. You know, where did the goals come from? It's a, it's a bobble ball in the box from another set piece 
and we end up nicking it, but Rotherham go down and score because we rely on set pieces. Look at all of our goals under Harris. Most of our goals under Harris, the two against um, Southampton, the one against Birmingham, you know, uh, I believe Watford, can't quite remember the Watford goal, but, you know, and, and today, they're, they're all set pieces. We do not score goals from open play. That's got to change. Now, Honeyman's a very good technical player as well. He, he can see a pass. He can stretch the field. He can get him behind. And Fleming up top might be the best option there because we're not going to outscore teams. So we can't rely or we can't have any mistakes at the back because one mistake takes points off the board for us. And other teams don't have that. They have the luxury of being 2 3 nil up or they've got the options there that if they do get into trouble or they make a mistake at the back, they can get themselves out of it. The reality is, is we've punched above our weight for the last three, four seasons with mediocre players. I don't believe having a blockbusting budget. Yeah. And listen, we, we've said it before, guys. Yeah. Most of these players in this starting lineup and in this squad were signed by New Harris. Now, what other teams have this longevity? You know, a lot of, lot of teams, they bring the player through, you know, they play a couple of years, then they move on for a good profit. Bristol City are very good at doing that. Norwich are very good at doing that. Uddersfield have done that. QPR have done that. Um, these player teams around us, business-wise, they make money, you know, and they know when to freshen things up. It needs freshening up at Millwall, big time. Because these players have been here since Harris was in charge. So we've had four managers since Harris, including Harris for the second time. It's just four managers. Five, if you include Barrett. And it's the same players. And they're asked to do vastly different things. Rowett is probably similar to what Harris wants to do. But Harris likes to just add that little bit more of attack where he plays a Rowett-style defensive football, but with four at the back. So... Then Edwards comes in and, and tries to change it up. And then Barrett just tries to steady the ship. These players aren't good enough. They're not good enough. There's some quality there, but that ship has sailed. It's ran its course. And we're holding on to players that year too late. Blackburn game, after that game, we should have gutted the squad. We should have done. Because we should have saw the signs that we could push on next season Dan Riggs put the comment up earlier. It's the oldest squad in the championship. It is. It's the oldest squad in the championship that has only come from behind to win a game. The last time we did that, as Dan put up, was in 2022. This is not sustainable. Now, the football under Harris isn't sustainable, but it might keep us up. But we need to have a serious overhaul. But going down is going to jeopardise that because we could find ourselves in an even deeper situation if we go down, there's a real danger that without the finances and the loss of players, that the quality gets so bad because we're having to go from the youth or we're having to buy really low on, on prospects or on if, buts and maybes that we could see ourselves sitting in League One for, for years. It happened before. League One's not an easy league to get out of. League One is what the championship was six years ago. Some big teams in League One with some big budgets, some big squads. We're not going to go back down to League One and march straight back up. It's not going to happen. Buy cheap, sell high business, and that's what we have to do. That's what we have to do, and we don't do that. We do not recoup any money for any players. The last one we did, I think, was George Savile, and that was even with in um, in payment in a payment structure. You know, and and where and that money did go back. You know, we saw some of it. We, you know, we we spent some, but what did what did we get out of it? We got nothing. We've actually spent some money. You know, we bought Fleming in over a million, Casper over a million, Nisbet over a million. You know, we've bought in some players, but we're not recouping from the existing players that we've got. We're not overhauling the squad. We need to overhaul the squad, and this is where the problem lies. Because it's, it's, it's poorly ran. Football, as much as we hate to admit it, ladies and gents, football nowadays is a business. Yeah, Millwall aren't no different to that. We may be the, one of the very few, if only old school football clubs where, you know, old school passionate fans 
and an old school way of playing football and mentality and belief and, and an aura about us that no other club has. But ultimately, it's a business and the business is what keeps you up. The business is what sends you down and the business is, is where you make your bread. And we don't do it. We do it poorly. We let youth go for nothing or they just get taken away and we don't invest it. Or we keep on to we hold on to players too long in their career where they're unsaleable, they don't have a a market to, to sell them, or they leave on a free. We don't recoup. There's no turnover. Squads need turnover to be successful. Every championship club, every few years, the squad looks completely different. Ours has been the same for the last several years. The same players. It's very stale very stale and it has to change. And some of these fan favourite players, you know, they may need to be moved on because the club's bigger. And if we go down with the finances changing in the championship next season, the, the TV rights and so on, and the, you know, the, the game rights and just being in the championship, going down would be catastrophic for this club it, with the situation that we're in off the field with the recruitment the finances and the squad having 11 players, which is what of a 25 man squad, this half your squad almost going or being out of contract. We're in major trouble, major trouble. Here's the people who run the club. Well, put his squad together, never gets the pearls. He should always leave squad. He did and he didn't though, Stephen, you know, because, you know, Harris signed Leonard, Harris signed Sav Harris signed Cooper, you know, Murray Wallace, you know, Billy Mitchell come through under Harris, Bradshaw, he signed Bradshaw. Mostly players are Harris players. Rowan got the most out of these players. The best we've had out of these players was the first season we come up under Harris and last season take away the last month and a half and the last season under Rowett. The rest of it, you know, we've been fighting for our lives. Don't think he's committed as his dad was and it could hurt us in the summer if it doesn't bring Maris back to the transfer market. Um, I think that he's done really well, James Berylson, to steady the ship, you know, in what's a terrible situation for his family. Um, how much does he want to do it? That remain. I don't think we'll ever really know that. You know, we know that his dad wanted him to do it and he's doing it for his dad. Ultimately, we want someone who, who wants to be here. I think he does. I think he gets it. I think he gets us. He was the one who decided to bring Harris back. Apparently, he's the one who made the phone call to Harris to say, would you come back? So, you know, and he was at the den on Friday. So I've got no problems with James Berylson. I think he needs to just learn a bit more. Um, needs to not let others around him run the club. You know, I think that's where the problem is lying off the field, that others are running the club. And James Berylson's the man who signs off, but he's ultimately told by your people in the board, the, the usual names that we've mentioned. Um, I think they're the ones running the club. Does anything else need to be said about that? You know, it is. That is Millwall. I remember a stint years ago when we went 14 games unbeaten. Wickham, Wanderers, I think they hadn't won in 13 games. We went to Wickham away, but it's 3-0. You know, QPR. You know, and, But then we go and beat Southampton and Watford and, you know, good display against West Brom and give a good count of ourselves at Leeds. It's always been the Millwall way is we play... Well against the big teams because the crowd's up for it and the atmosphere's there and the players see this big team. You know, we've had it with the FA Cup runs, you know, Leicester, Watford, all coming down to the Den Everton. You know, we're going to be Blackburn who were flying at the time. Aston Villa, you know, they come down to the Den and, and they struggle because this is an horrible place to come and play football down the Den. Always has been. Hasn't been this year, though. It's been an easy ride. But it is very mere wall. And we said it on the pod the other night that this is this is on the table. This isn't off. This isn't uh, something that we're we're not expecting. You know, we we should be beating Rotherham, but if we lose that game, 
don't say it weren't expected or or that's caught you with a sucker punch because that, that, that's me all. That's me all, all over. It's put us in a bad situation, a very, very bad situation because now that mentality is coming back to bite us in the arse. Stevie Warner can see that Kevin and all are playing football club with JB Jr. Kevin himself said at the forum, James hasn't got a clue how to run a club. And he said that in front of all of us. And I think we spoke about that when I met up with you on Friday, Dan, didn't we? That, that's shocking that that gets outed at a forum in front of fans. And that speaks volumes to why we're in the situation that we're in. Because if John Berylson's still in charge, I don't think we see that. I don't think we see that. You know, it's, would Edwards have been hired if um, John Godreston was still here? Maybe not. Maybe not, because it was Aldo that reached out to Edwards. It really, it, you know, it was Aldo who reached out to him. How much freedom has he got? A guy should not be here. The guy, well, I think it's, uh, Mickey put it up, I said Scout or him, whatever, was a postman. And how thick is his black book? You need a black book in that role that he's in. You need a black book of contacts, of people you can go after for loans, tap up about contracts, you know, you need to know agents. Who is he? What's he? What bread has he earned? He went to Stoke and completely fucked that up. Why he come back? Why we, we thought that was a good idea? I don't know. But he's part of the problem, without a shadow of a doubt. Massive, massive part of the problem. I'll come to this one first. Who do you want to see come in the summer, given that most of the players are out of contracts on their leave? And this is, a, this is something that we could talk about all night, Connor. We really could, because with the players that are leaving, who is out there? You know, we've got some ready-made replacements, but that takes away from the squad depth. You know, you've got Mayer, can replace Longman. We haven't got anyone on that right-hand side at all. No one at all. Up front, you know, Bradders and Nisbet are going to be here, so I think we need to get a, a target man. Tanganga is going to go back. Mitchell should come in and and hopefully take that spot because I don't think Hutch might get a contract just for, you know, service and to be a leader in the locker room as a backup if needed. But ultimately, it depends who leaves and who gets renewed and... It's, it's, this is the problem: is that we got so, the club's got so much to do in the off season that the focus is going to isn't going to be on football or tactics or the manager very much because the club have got so much to sort out before we can even think of fielding a team. They need to get one first, so that that's obviously going to set, set us back. I'd, I'd like to see if I'm looking at individuals. I'd like to see Brook Norton Cuffey maybe come back on loan. Um, I don't think he's going to obviously go anywhere near the Arsenal team. I'd like to see if we can snip him back up because I think there's a player there. I think there's been a, a good player there for us this season. Um, I'd like to see us make a run at Cresswell again. I think he wants to come and play for the club. I think the ball, I think we want him. You know, we went after him, offered a deal for him that Leeds ultimately rejected because they wanted four million, I believe it was. But I would go after Cresswell again, definitely. We need a left back. Um, Malachi, he's, he's been alone at Sutton. Maybe the step up to the championship starting is probably going to be too much. I think we, we've got Joe Bryan on the book still, but we need a left back. Um, and we need another central midfielder. Desperate for a central midfielder and then a right-sided winger. But these are all before these the uh, players out of contract and the lonely players go back. These are players that we need to be looking at to add to the squad, not replace players with. We need to be adding, you know, because we haven't got the depth. So these are players, the players that I'm mentioning or the positions that I'm mentioning are just going to fill the holes that are going to be left from players leaving. And that ain't good. That's not going to be good enough because we won't have any any depth behind them. So this is going to be a really busy off season. We're going to see a lot of movement. Ultimately, I think a lot of the players are going to be retained that are out of contract purely because it's cheaper. And, you know, it's, it's it's going to be financially easier for the club to do that. So I think Sav will be back. Bradshaw's already back. Um, and a few of the others. Lenny, I think, gets offered the new deal as well. Uh, maybe Hutch. I think Bart let, gets let go. I think Bart's done. Um, but, yeah, this is, you know, before we start talking about adding, we need to actually get enough players in first. Um, so 
yeah, it's uh, it's going to be real, real busy. Yeah, big time. Totally agree with you, John. McArthur's doing a fantastic job. Fantastic job. Harris should be put in that role. He's respected. People know him. People love him. You know, he gets the club. Yeah, I would quite happily see Harris upstairs without a doubt. Alan <laughs> Foden and the boy. Yeah, I'd love that. Fifty. They can have 50 quid and uh, all you can eat at the pie mash shop at half time. Really hoping that Harris took over. We would have said to Kavanaugh that he doesn't want Aldo and that himself will buy the players. He didn't, um, yeah. No, I think I don't think Aldo wanted someone like Harris back because Harris overrides him and Aldo is self centered, you know, narcissistic. It's all about Aldo. He approached Edwards, it's Aldo, Aldo's way. He didn't go after Harris, it was Belson that did. Harris overrides and has more, more, in the more in the bank than, than Aldo. So, yeah, it won't be. That, that's already at loggerheads without a doubt. I'm going to get a few more of you guys and then I'm going to jump off because I'm sure you can appreciate that running solo is difficult to talk to your comments on myself, but um, I'm going to try and get to the, the rest as much as I can so that you're not all left in limbo and hopefully I can give you the right answers and we'll have a full star-studded pod on the next one, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, yeah, agree with you, Andrew. Yeah, it is. Hamstrings, groins, ankles. He's, again, an ageing player. Ageing squad. This, this, it, it, the comments are all the same, guys, isn't they? Look, we're all on the same page with the age of the squad, the, the, what needs to happen with the squad. And it's 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 been something that's not crept up on us. See, the thing is, it's, it's, this hasn't crept up on us. This isn't all of a sudden we've turned around and gone, fuck, we're the oldest squad in the league. We don't score goals. We don't retain, we don't um, get money back for players. Uh, we don't, We need to think about the future. We need to get some options behind these players. This hasn't crept up on us. It's been happening for years. Absolutely happening for years. And the fans have seen it. You guys have seen it. I have seen it. You know, we, we can all sit there. We sat on a Saturday every week. You know, oh, we need a striker. We need a target man. We need another centre-half. The fans see it better than the people upstairs do. The fans at most clubs do. But then we're not the ones in that job. We're not paid to do that job. So ultimately, it falls on deaf ears. And the only voice the fans have is on management decisions because when it gets toxic down the den, things change. That's the only influence we have as fans. But we can't go calling for players. But it's it's this is not creeped up on us. This has been happening for years. And it's finally... Finally, not that I want it to, but now it's starting to veer its head over the horizon and bite us firmly in the arse. Because as as Dan put up, it's the oldest squad in the championship. And we've got no one behind, no ready-made replacements for the players out of contract. So they're going to get new deals because it's financially viable, because we can't go afford to replace all of them. So we're going to have the same situation next season, whether we're in League One or in the championship. And this is a massive problem that we have. John, I really appreciate that, mate. Thank you very much. And I appreciate, guys, as I said, it hasn't been as smooth, but I've done my best. I hope you appreciate that. And I hope I haven't bored you or you've, you know, I hope, I hope the show's been worth your time. And uh, hopefully you won't send the pitchforks around for me after being so low for a while. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. I really appreciate that as well. Sounds like we played well, just wasn't our day today. Do you know what, uh, Peck and Poet, we, we just didn't play well. We didn't play well. No, it was it was just, it was just lump it and there was no plan. It was just ruffle in the box. It was limbs everywhere and we didn't create enough. There, we didn't have that cutting pass or that edge. It was just trying to lump it in the box. And it was slow and it was laboured and it was, it was pathetic. And the player should be ashamed of himself because Harris will not have set that out there for that to be the game plan. You know, you could see Harris wanted to go after him today with the likes of the Norway coming in. What more keeping his place to stretch that on that left-hand side? You could see that Harris put the players in to maybe have a go at Rotherham. Not a full go, don't get me wrong, but having Casper in there, you can get after him a little bit and it didn't work out. The players just didn't step up today. It was poor. Very poor. And they've got to own it. Harris will make sure they know it. And 
it may turn out to be a blessing in disguise because we go to Huddersfield, which is an even bigger game. If we would have won today comfortably, you'd look at Huddersfield as the banana skin. Now Huddersfield isn't the banana skin. Huddersfield is the, we can't fuck this up. That we can't fuck this up game was today. That's That's gone now. That trump card has been played. Phone a friend, ask the audience. Gone. Ain't got them no more. It's the million pound question. There's, there's nothing else. All chips are in. Huddersfield is now the biggest game of the season. So I think that Harris will use this as a positive, as a look what could happen. Look at the situation now. This is what happens when you don't perform. I think Harris will be good at doing that as well because, um, like, today, like I say, to find any positives from the performances you ain't going to find, you may find a positive in the situation where Harris can use it to our advantage to make sure it doesn't happen again. That's the only positive. Appreciate that, guys. Thank you very much. Have a moment, Jay, for a pay. Well done, mate. Well, nice one, Dan. Dan, it was a pleasure as well to link up with you Friday, mate. We will definitely do more of that. Um, enjoyed having a beer with you, mate, 100%. So, yeah, I appreciate all your kind comments as well, guys. Thank you so much. Um, again, a pretty mate owes me a lot of these. Mickey's, Mickey's, if he's watching, Mickey, you're in trouble, mate. Because Mickey actually goes on holiday in the morning. So, Mickey, if you've got a spare seat, mate, you better come round and pick me up by all accounts. So, listen, guys, um, I appreciate your time. Um, appreciate Nick for coming on at short notice as well. We just got back from Rotherham um, to share his thoughts on the game. And I appreciate all your input and chat. And, again, some matters of business, just like, share, subscribe to the channel. Um, it does everyone and the pod a mass, mass favour. And keeps the content coming. And we'll be back with a live, the pre-record for my Who Are You should go out this week. And then we'll be back with a preview of the Huddersfield game on Friday, as per usual. But if anybody's got any questions or, Bobby, you said about the Who Are You, again, drop us a DM and uh, we can get that sorted out for you. But look, everybody, thank you for your time tonight. Appreciate it. Hope you all had a good Easter, bar the football. And... Uh, Hope you get back to work and no one's too worse for wear. But yeah, enjoy the rest of your evening and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys. Oh, giddy up, oh, giddy up and get away. Oh, we're going Millwall, how we're going today. Here we go. Oh, rocking all over the